Good afternoon. Welcome to today's edition of Hot Coffee Chat with Dokas. So we are praying that you're going to have an awesome time with us. It's been an amazing week from the long weekend. We're praying that you really had an awesome long weekend. Uh, in the studio with us today, we have a, an amazing young man. <laughs> He's going to tell us about who he is, and then we'll share the topic for today. Welcome to the studio, sir. Thank you very much. Good how afternoon. are you? I'm good. And okay. how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Great. Happy Easter, by the way. Thank you, and you happy too. Easter to all the viewers. Yeah. Um, so my name's uh, Paul Piri mm. Simon. I'm named after my father. Okay. I'm a fourth year student, so a final year student at the University of Zambia. I'm doing educational management mm. and administration. I'm also the CEO also the founder for Gifted Minds Mentorship Foundation uh, that deals with talents and also developing gifts and talents in individuals, especially the youths and women. Yeah. Those are the area of concentration. And um, I'm an author for a book known as Gifted Ma uh, Sorry, it is never enough. So mm. this book is how to heal and call from the pain of losing a loved one. I'm also a teacher in theological perspective, and uh, I also do leadership and also youth entrepreneurship consultancy. Wow. Yeah, and I'm also specialized so, so, so much in inner healing. That is mainly my area of operation when it comes to the vineyard of, of the Lord. I also love poetry okay. so, so, so much. So even the book uh, that I authored is mm. full of poetry and, okay. and, and so on, yeah. So today our topic is about how to manage pain. Pain comes to us in different shades. So our therapy for today will just teach us how to manage our pain positively. So before we enter into the conversation of how to manage our pain, um, would you just love to share about what inner healing is? Oh yeah, so inner healing, before I touch the whole perspective of inner healing, yeah. we have to understand that life is from the inside. Mm -hmm. What is manifested from the outside is just the true reflection of what is inside. So inner healing, it is the actual touching of what is happening inside. So the trauma that is happening inside, that's what begins to facilitate what is known as inner healing. Mm. For example, if you are traumatized psychologically, that is not seen from the outside, but the injury is inflicted from the inside. So when you begin to heal from the inside, that mm. begins now to give it the shape of what is known as inner healing. So in brief, inner healing, it is the interior healing of human journey. Wow. Yeah. So would you just love to explain to us what pain is? Oh yeah, so in simple definition, pain is the affliction mm. that is imposed on a person either emotionally, physically, psychologically. And it is something that takes away your peace or the normal operation of yourself. That is known as pain. Okay. Yeah. So we are going through this book a little bit. It's called um, It's Never Enough. It was done by Mr. Paul Simon Perry. Is, um, there's a part of the book in chapter one, I loved it. Okay. Would you just tell us in a sentence about chapter one? Okay, so chapter one talks about owing the pen. So as the topic says, managing your pen. So mm. before you begin to manage your pen, yeah. you have to acknowledge and own the pen to say, I am hurt. That so begins. if somebody doesn't realize that they are hurting, it's not possible for them to realize it that they are. Yeah, yeah, it is actually impossible and it's not possible because you have not acknowledged. We are telling you, for example, that, look, you have been shot. And they're saying, no, I'm not shot. So which means we can't prescribe appropriate medication for you. Mm. So for you to begin to understand that I need help, it faces us to come from you to say, ah, People, I think it is too much. I think my mood swings are too much. I think mm. my temper is too much. So that acknowledgement, you know, the, like the disciples in Amos, where they say, our eyes 
open mm. and Jesus disappeared. That is the first perspective of how you manage pain. You can't manage something that you don't understand. You can't manage something that you have not acknowledged. Mm. So you first have to acknowledge to say, I am hurt. You take responsibility of your situation. Oh, yes. And usually we want other people out there to be responsible for caring or managing our pain. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. you are being kept by mom, maybe you lost your father. Mm -hmm. You want mom to, to be the pillow. When and you can and be the pillow yeah. for yourself. And you see, that also reminds me, you see, that's yeah. a very important uh, aspect. You cannot heal on behalf of someone. Mm. This is the truth. You see, I remember the time we lost our father last year. Yeah. Um, all of us, we had the general perspective of loss. Oh, okay, we have lost the man. It was quite painful. It was a dark cloud. But after the funeral procession and everything ended, each one of us had to answer the individual question. Mm. How is life going to move on? It's not so about we. It was we. not like we. It was like, how am I going to move how on? how I. Yeah. Wow. And so it was something that I took on myself. I have got mentors. Those are the people I started confiding on. So how can I manage this? How can I walk uh, through this? And how can I manage? So even my brothers and my young sister, my mother herself, mm. there is a way she had now to come and manage mm. her own situation. So yeah. definitely people can't heal on your behalf. You yeah. have to heal on your own behalf. Yeah. Wow. So mm -hmm. would you love to tell the viewers what inspired you to write this book? What was the backbone? All right, so the background of this book is in two perspectives. The first one is, uh, as I've said, that I deal so much with inner healing. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it came a time, especially in 2016, most of the people that were coming for, for counseling, yeah. there were people who could come, oh, poor, I've lost my father, poor, I've lost my mother, I've lost my brother, I've lost my cousin. Mm -hmm. So it was more on the loss. Mm -hmm. And much that I could handle is, oh, okay. I could search on the internet, I could look out for books that uh, really talks about um, how to heal from the pain of losing a loved one, especially death. I find that people don't talk much about it. Mm -hmm. So that begin to click, okay, so maybe I might address this subject. Then when I came back from Uganda, because that's where I was doing my inner healing course. So when I came back, I had a, a good friend of mine. She's mm. still a good friend of mine, memory. She, she lost uh, her father. And these two were very close, very, very close. And the relationship that they had, the daughter to father relationship, also inspired me. So when she lost the father, she had a lot of questions for me. Mm. Why, poor, this time? Yeah. Uh, have we offended him? Uh, have we done wrong to God that he should take away our breadwinner and so on? So that, what I was writing in 2016, I started now prescribing certain things to her. Wow. They said, okay, try to own the pen. Mm -hmm. That is after they buried, and I think after three months passed. Mm -hmm. Try this. So the way she was responding to the process of healing gave me that vivid point. Okay, so this book actually can begin to do what? To work yeah. out. So I finished everything based on experimenting on memory, but it was working in real terms. I packed this book. I started working on another book, and that's the first book I wanted to work on. Mm. But the time I wanted to submit it for publication, yeah. something within me just stopped me. Oh, yeah. And I don't know why I was delaying to submit that book, which I think I'm going to publish oh, at the wow. end of the year. Okay. Then just suddenly, that's the time I lost my father. Mm. Then upon losing my father, I don't know what I was doing over the PC. That is after we, we buried and everything, we started moving on. So when I looked at that book, the inspiration just came. Okay. Go back to that book. Mm. So I, saw, I never had a, a, a title, by the way. It was just something that I just wrote. So it is never enough. You know where this it is never enough topic came from? It is something that I was crying over the three days when dad passed on. Why so soon? Because my father never got sick. Mm. It was just sudden, within 45 minutes. Mm. He just stopped talking, was fitting, took him to the hospital, just received a phone call, you have to be strong. Your dad it, is gone. He didn't make it. He didn't make it. So to me, it was like, why so soon? Mm. Then within me, it was like, okay, it's not enough to stay with people. We need them. Our beloved, we need them. So 
the title now came, it is never enough. And it is true. Even if someone is to die at 117, you still say, why so soon? Yeah, the so question we are why not ready. always pops up. Yeah, we are not ready to let go. Yeah. We are not ready to, to, to face the pain. Mm. So that's how I had to put the, the title there. Then I had now to put my experience. And now I had to put memories experience at the end of the book. Then the whole book became the show of me and how I lost mm. my father. So that's the background of, okay. of So of like this in song. exploring the forms of pain that people are subjected to, would you just try to highlight on that? All right, so um, one of the things or one of the problems, if I can put it that way, that uh, a lot of people are facing is, for example, after um, a funeral, it would just end there. Oh, yeah. okay, Vasila, it ends there. But people are burning outside. You see, some of the depression that people are going through, it's not because maybe they're not eating healthy. Maybe they're eating healthy, but emotionally there is something there that is on the eating them up. Yes. So coming up with it is never enough, I want you to feel the gap of, okay, let's talk about it. This topic I know is ugly, but mm. let's talk about the grief. Let's talk about how to let go of, of that pain. So the first form of pain... When music matters, catch Africa's hottest DJs and presenters for the freshest and hot music videos from all over the world. <laughs> No problems, not to kill it. I know sometimes you feel done. There will be better days, better days. When the word of God matters. Genesis with Cain getting angry at Abel, so angry that he killed him. And all through the Bible, we see situations where people were angry. And all through the Bible, we see the bad results. And we see God saying, turn it over. Look at, 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 at society in, in, in general, look at the politicians, look at everybody. Everybody shifts the blame to somebody. Yeah, so you see, emotional pain, mm. it is one of the crucial, but also deep kind of healing. Because when you want to heal emotionally, there's no need to avoid or to ignore the pain. Mm. It's also something that I inscribed in the book. Yeah. One doctor one time told me, because up to now, <laughs> without shame, I do fear injection. I, I, I don't like injection. Mm. But another doctor one time told me, Paul, for you to become better, you have to become worse. So one of the pointers to mm. healing emotionally, you have to face the pain. Mm -hmm. You have to face, face it. Yeah, you, you have to say, how was it? Mm. Like one of the things I used to do, because during Dad's funeral, especially the time we were burying, there were photographers there, we were making a video, and each one of us has the video. And I do watch that video, I have it in the laptop. And you know, one very, most important, because I couldn't watch the body being, I broke before, just the time I just saw the forehead. So you know, one, one, you just mentioned one thing about body viewing. Mm -hmm. Usually people avoid it, but when yeah. you do body viewing, it's part of the healing process. It is, it is. And you find some people, they put them in isolation and no, you're too broken. Was yeah, that, you can't. You can't so it remains. So when they tell them to remain, something happens to the emotions. Yeah, it shatters. Yes. It shatters everything about mm. them. It's like they become at a standstill. Mm. But with me, one of the things I was recommended is face the pain. So when I'm watching that video, my favorite part, I just pray the body view. Just begin just to watch. If I cry, I just cry there and say, Lord, help me. Mm. Now, you see, the problem that most people are facing is they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to face about it and say, ah, no, just, just forget about it. And No, if you want to heal, you also have to pass the way it was, the pain that it was. Mm. Even if it is disappointment, maybe in a relationship, yeah. for you to begin to process mm. the healing, you have to face how it was, how mm. you broke your heart. Then that is the first point of healing. Then you have to remain there. Mm -hmm. What I mean by remaining there is don't say, oh, no, I don't need to imagine this. Be there. 
mm. if it is to Allow break down. Allow your mind to be there. Yeah, soak yourself, absorb mm. yourself in it. If it is to cry, if it is, if it is to shout, if it is to, 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 to cloud, cloud, let it be so. That begins the facilitation of healing. Mm. I've always told, uh, told people that when you have lost someone, please don't hold yourself. Cry even at that time. Yeah. Because it is one way of crying. <laughs> Abel Chungo put it very well, Mamuna Samarira. With me, during the funeral, I, I think I overtook most of the, of the women. Mm. I cried, I took it personal because I was saying, I think I need to move on mm. from here. Yeah. He has gone and I believe in life after death. I know he is well, wherever he is, but this is my moment. Mm. Let me live the moment. Let me be in the moment. You see, one of the things that is also hindering healing emotionally, is we don't want to leave the moment. Mm. We want to jump to another stage. We yeah. want to become better, mm. but we avoid the process yeah. of processing the pain. Mm. So there should that point of let me be in it. We let me break down. It. Let me cry. Mm. Then even to themselves, they begin to unveil, okay, I think now I can move to another stage to which I can, I can be healed. So one of the things I discovered in the book is the part of people enduring the pain. Yes. The word endure is a very tricky word yeah, to comply yeah. with. Yes, yes. Yeah. You see, enduring comes from the, from the point of a process. Mm. Why did I use the word enduring? Because healing is not an automatic event. Well, we can say healing is in two phases. It can be automatic, mm. but true healing is a process. Yeah. Because imagine you have stayed with someone for 23 years. Don't expect that you're going to heal in three days. Mm. You're going to heal in four days. You can't even be healed in a year. So it is a it's process. It's gradual. It is gradual. So hence and you have to endure. The memory is something that we neglect. Yeah. We don't it, understand the strength of our memory oh, in yes. life. Yes, true. So how can you advise the viewers to realize how powerful their memory is? You know, the time that your memory mm. is working, mm. you need to connect with it in the right way. Oh, yes. So that you don't focus on the negative. On the negative part, yeah. I think I yeah. also even highlighted in the book to say healing also goes with positivity. Mm -hmm. You see, when you are traumatized, if I can put it that way, it is that point where the soul, mm. in the emotional perspective, becomes venerable. Yeah. So when it becomes venerable, the mind wanders, the mm. memory wanders. Mm. That is where people now even have thoughts of, <laughs> let me just take doom and just end everything. Yeah. It's where maybe some people even say, I think maybe a one couple of And you know, some is not just taking doom. From that very yeah. tragic loss, they failed to come back to life, even just going back to work. Oh, yeah. Or yeah. even just acting like a normal person. Mm. The dead mm. are gone now. So what is your plan after they after have that, gone? Yeah. You have to get up. Yeah. So you see, for the mind, it's one thing that we have to be very much conscious with. Mm. Because even me, from my own experience, certain memories do flash. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll just give a practical example. Two days ago, my young sister has got a tablet. Mm. Now, I was doing something on the laptop. Then she told me to say, can you help me to put the tablet to charge? So I didn't know that she had put dad mm -hmm. on the screen saver. So then I said, what? Did I see properly? Then when I checked, it was him. So memory started coming. Yeah. Then one thought that came, it was negative. Mm. Okay, but why did he go so, so soon? Then immediately I had to say, oh, okay, this is God's will. So there is a serious need to which you have to train your mind. You have to train your memory you have to, to focus nature on positivity. Your memory. And you know, the memory mm. is connected to the eyes. Oh, yeah. So you're in mm. control of your eyes. How come we allow our memories to, to take over us instead of us controlling our memories? Yeah, you see, the whole perspective, it comes if how venerable mm. is pain making you. Mm. You see, we are talking about managing pain. So when you say managing pain, it simply means you have to manage every agent yeah. that involves pain. So... If you know that these eyes, they might lead me to something negative, begin to train yourself, okay, so I'm going to cut such kind of conversation or I'm going to cut such kind of areas that, for example, if my eyes sit on them, don't remind me of that. Mm -hmm. You get to, to, to cut yourself so that you get to focus so much on your perspective. But you see, the major aspect of it is 
be in charge of the pen. Don't allow the, the pen, pen to you be in have charge to of you. Manage it. Yeah, you have to be in charge to say, oh, okay, yes, I am traumatized, I am mm. heartbroken, I'm disappointed in this, but this will not define me, this will not flow anywhere, I'm going to manage it. So what I'm going to do, this area, I will not do it, this, I'm going to do it, this, I'm going to concentrate, such conversation, I think I'm not yet ready mm. to heal, I think I'm not going to engage myself. That, that begins to facilitate begins, management. Yeah of pain. And one thing that maybe I can mention very quickly is don't fasten your healing. Mm -hmm. Healing comes with time. So yeah. not because I have talked about managing pain, then you say, okay, I think I need to do something. Take your time. Be yourself. Breathe. Be yourself. Mm. Be real. Yeah. Be real to the situation. Yeah. Be real with everything. If you, I remember I could call my spiritual father to tell him that same, mm, daddy, vakosa, I have mm. missed him. You see, most of the time when I come from campus after exams and I go home for the holidays, he's the first man mm. who used to welcome me. But last year, it there was, was no crazy. Welcome. Yeah, it was, it was quiet. And so of course, at home... So how do people manage that quietness that comes in the home after the death of a loved one? It's not easy to live with that, the silence. Yeah. You are feeling their yeah. absence. Yeah. But how can they overcome it? So you see, uh, I also give an example from, from mine. After mm -hmm. um, most of the relatives left, and now we, because we are six, so now we are five. Uh, I've got three, two brothers rather, and one sister, and mom, and myself. So we, we are five. So after we sat, uh, it, was, it was tricky to how we're going to break this silence. Of course, I can tell you we felt the absence. We felt it. Mm, this man is not coming. But the most important thing that we started engaging ourselves is let's be open. And mm. it's something that I told them that you see, the only way we can move on is let's be open to anything we'll be feeling, whether it is the so pain. So you have to be like, aware of your feelings in that yeah, time. It is something that mm. very vividly you have to put so much into mm. consideration. Okay, what do you feel? How is your mood today? Yeah. I, I, I'm telling you the first week, the time we buried, that week we had a lot of That's mood this week. That's the most heavy one because yeah. when everybody's around and now they've all gone, yeah, it's now, now yeah. between you and your feelings. It was, it, it was yeah. hard. I remember we almost fought with my immediate brother because I was taking the same video for the funeral, putting in my laptop. So accidentally, the, 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 the volume spilled and some crying overhead. So it was like, what are you watching? Mm. And was sensitive to this feeling. I said, oh, no, sorry, I am putting the video in the laptop. No, if you want to, to listen to this, put it in, in headset. And it was just all over the whole situation. And I said, So you triggered down. certain emotions in yeah, him. Yeah, in him. You were supposed to understand him as in he him, is. And yeah. as siblings, we usually mm. forget that we are different. Oh, yeah. As your mm. fingerprints are different, mm -hmm. even your personalities, your mood swings, everything. So even when there's a bereavement in the home, you need to understand. Mm. Does this person go cuckoo when there's a funeral? Others, yeah. they're going to talking too much. Yeah. yeah so you need yeah. to understand who behaves how and how and do we how. handle yes, them. True. True. Wow. Very true. So I, I understood what you have said. Because that time, even generally, to, to people who are following this, the emotional orientation differs. Yes. Uh, Mom's emotional perspective was that of quietness. So we could make sure we were somewhat distracted, take her out, take her for a walk. My brother was sensitive. My immediate brother mm. was sensitive. My, our firstborn, him was of a, of a complaining type. Ah, dad is gone, so yeah. my, I'm now the firstborn. My young sister, though she's young, for her, she was just wondering the whole situation, okay, what's going on. But the, the four of us is where the struggle was. So that's the point I could tell them that be open. Mm. And one way or the other, begin to accept acceptance. the situation. Yeah. And a half point of acceptance. You see, one way to us to, to get to move on mm. from whatever has happened to us negatively or, or positively is acceptance. Do you accept that you are injured? Do you accept that, that, you, that have you have lost someone? Mm. So if you don't accept that, it is very, very difficult for you to move on because mm. you've been denial. And you see, a lot of things that are killing people nowadays such that it is leading them into desperation or 
or depression is they are still refusing that, for example, no, I'm not heartbroken. Mm. No, I'm not divorced. No, no, I've not lost someone. No, dad may be somewhere. No, this is not true. The moment you are in that situation, you should mm. know that you have also shattered yeah. other doors for you to begin to breathe. I described in the book to say healing is like fresh air coming in. Mm. in a particular room. So now, imagine you've closed the room. There's no One ventilation. way or the other, you are going to suffocate. And mm. a lot of people are suffocating. It's such that all the time they look at the snap or the photo, mm. oh, dad, oh, dad, oh, mommy, oh, my sister, oh, my cousin. You are going to suffocate one or the other. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do those things. Mm. You can do those things, but make sure that the window is open. And what is that window? Acceptance. Allow positive words to come through your mm. soul. Allow beautiful melody to come through you. Mm. Allow other people to speak in your life. Um, talk to someone. Talk to um, someone. Find a community you can talk to. When I say a, a, a community, I'm not saying a bigger community. Mm. You can have friends, you can have sisters, you can mm. have mentors, you can have your spiritual parents that you can use those people to, mm. to talk to. Me, this is one of the things I do. They could just listen. I could just describe whatever I could describe. I think God at that point was not fair. It was not fair. Mm. Why did God, Dad die when I was almost graduating? Yeah. They, were, they were just listening. And the only thing they could just say is remain open. Mm. And until now, the levels at which I have moved on, even coming up with this book, even after the loss, it could show that I had taken a lot of time to process to accept, mm. and so on. So sometimes I can even take my own personal journey. Going to the graveyard, I was just going to say, Dad, I've published a book. I have made it to my final year. Mm. I wish you were here. I miss you. Awesome. So I've things. seen these tickets. Oh, yeah. Hey, what is it about? So this is a ticket. Um, I'll be launching the same book officially on the mm. 29th okay. of May at St. Daniel's Comboni, McKinney Villa. Uh, where we'll have a lot of things. So tickets, we have printed out tickets on sale. That is 100 quarter VIP and 50 quarter okay. ordinary. So it's been nice having you on the show. Like in a minute, just say a word of goodbye to the viewers so that we... All right, the only the thing show. I can tell you, my viewers, is that God is love. Mm. God is still on the throne. Yeah. He's not yet through with you. Remain positive wherever you are. Don't allow negativity to define you. Mm. And personally, I love you so much, and I'll keep on praying for you, especially those that are still struggling in letting go of the pain. Otherwise, it shall be well. Remain positive and wow. open. Thank you so much for coming through. So as you go through the week, just allow the pain to be under you. Don't let Definitely. the pain be over you. Definitely. Believe in yourself that you can heal. Mm. God is still able. Mm. Protect your mind and mm. love the people around you. Until we see you in our next edition of Hot Coffee Chat Show with Docast, it's bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Yeah.